Welcome to the first lesson of Unit 5. And today we're going to put all the stuff you learned in Unit 4 together with the ideas of curve sketching that you learned, I think, in Unit 1. So really, I'm just trying to say to you, hey, you've got enough calculus skills now to actually graph out functions really, really accurately. Uh, this, of course, without using the calculator. And if you're curious what we've uh, done in the past, we've got this curve sketching recipe here. And the first, I think, five things were what we did before in unit, I think, one, right? Way, way back in the beginning of our studies. That was using lots of pre-calculus stuff. And also the ideas of asymptotes, holes, y-intercepts, and behavior. Remember and behavior, the horizontal asymptote? That's the idea of taking the limit as x approached to infinity or negative infinity. Remember that? So that was in unit one. But now, well, negative infinity. Now, since you have learned the ideas of increasing, decreasing intervals, we now know that you can use the first derivative to give you some information about the slope, right, positive, negative, or where it's zero for the extrema points. And now, since you also learned about concavity, you now know things about the second derivative, or the actual shape of the graph. So, we're going to combine all this stuff together now to help you graph out functions. Here's our first example. Now, just to let you know, in all these examples, I've actually given you the first derivative and the second derivative. So you don't actually have to calculate them. Because if you made a mistake in the calculations, well, guess what? Everything else is wrong, too. So if you're looking at number one, let's see if we can go through the list. Can you, number one, do the domain? So I'm looking at this graph here. What do I notice about the domain? Mm, any non permissible values? Nope, nope, nope. So guess what? All real numbers. Are there any holes for this graph? Hmm, anything that cancels out from the numerator and denominator? Nope. So none of them. The y-intercept, of course, that's when you let x equal to 0. So I plug in 0, I get 0 over 1. So that's just 0, 0. Nice. Okay. Um, how about the vertical asymptotes? Do we have any of those? Nope. Not in this case either. The x-intercept, that's when you let y equal 0. just happens to also be 0, 0. And then the last thing, this EB, that's your end behavior. So remember when I did end behavior, what did I actually ask you to do? I'm looking at the limit, right? So I'll just quickly do end behavior over here. How about EB? That's when I have the limit as x approaches to infinity of the function 2x cubed all over x squared plus 1. Notice I use the end behavior model, so this is the same thing really as the limit as x approaches to infinity of 2x cubed over x squared. And that's the same thing as just 2x. So really, it does go to infinity, but it does seem to be getting closer and closer to this idea of y equals 2x. So up there like this, and also down here like that. Okay? All right, so we've done the first five things. Now it's time to do our increasing, decreasing intervals. So now I'm going to look at increasing, decreasing. I'm looking really at the first derivative. And if I'm looking at the first derivative, I actually ask myself, what are my critical numbers? So my critical numbers, CNs, that will be what? X equal to making the numerator equal to zero. So X equals to zero. Is there anything else? Mm, not that I can see. So here we go. Here's my first derivative number line. I'm going to plot 0 as my critical number. And then I want to test out each of the regions. I'm going to put something that's bigger than 0 into here. So bigger than 0, I think the answer is positive. If it's actually less than 0, I think the answer is also positive. So look, this is always increasing. Okay. And if it's always increasing, then do you think we have a relative max or relative min? If it's always increasing, nope. So guess what? No relative max, no relative min. You're like, what kind of graph is this? Okay. And then how about now looking at the second derivative now? So I'm going to look at the concavity. That's the second derivative. I'm looking for points of inflection or my inflection points if possible. That's when I get the second derivative equal to zero. So if I do this, I think I also get x equal to zero. 
but I also have an answer of x equals to plus or minus root 3, right, from the x squared minus 3 function or expression. Okay, so now I can graph out my second derivative number line. 0, root 3 positive, and negative root 3. And then once again, your idea here is to test out each of the regions. So plugging in a number that's like negative, I don't know, negative 2, I guess. Let's see what happens. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive, so it's positive. Uh, this will be positive. Positive, this is all positive. If I chose something like negative 1, that's positive. Mm, negative, ooh, that's negative. And then similar, if I chose something like positive 1, get positive, and then negative. Okay? Now, knowing this, you should be able to tell me what the points of inflection are. You're right, wherever there's change in concavity. So, 0, 0 for sure. And then also negative root 3. Now, what's the corresponding y value? Well, I have to plug it back into the y equation, so that would be 2, what is that, 2 times the cube root of 3 over 3 minus 2. So what is that, 2 times cube root of 3, oh, cubed, Ugh. cube root of 3, cubed, right? And then 3 squared is 3 minus 1 is 2, oh, well, that's nice think. What do I get here? Oh, 4, my fault. Okay, whatever that is. And also, positive root 3. I guess I can simplify this, right? 2 times 3 root 3 all over 4. I could simplify that if I wanted to. That's just, what, 3 root 3 over 2. By the way, this one's negative. Okay, so I'm thinking it's time to graph. Let me graph out my points. Zero, zero. This positive root 3, probably right here. 3 root 3 over 2. Root 3 is 1.73. 1.5 times that is about 2 point something. So maybe somewhere up here. Corresponding over here. Down there from the negative version. And then now my question is, how do I graph this out? We know it's always increasing, Whee! but we need to show some curvature. Looking at my second derivative, going from z 0 to root 3 is positive, so happy face, Whee! happy face, right? Going from 0 to negative 3, sad face. Hmm. And then back to happy face afterwards. Now you can think about how far does it go, but remember, our end behavior says that it gets closer to the line 2x, right? So let me just quickly draw a dotted line like this. And you'll see that the graph does concave down, but getting closer to the line. Concave up here, getting closer to this line. Okay? And that's how you can graph out this function. All right? So, uh, as long as you follow these steps, you should be fine. Nothing really new that I'm teaching you today. It's just you're putting all these things together. All right? So, I'm going to ask you to try number two. Once again, I'm going to ask you to go through the pre-calculus stuff first. Domain, vertical asymptotes, holes, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. Then do the limit to get the end behavior. And then first derivative tests or first derivative information for relative max and min, and points of inflection using the second derivative. Okay? Now for this one, I'm going to walk you through the first part, because I do want to figure out the domain, and I think for this function, I should do some simplification first. I hope you can see that the denominator can be written as x minus 1 squared. That helps me a lot, because I now I know that the domain can't be equal to 1, I also know there's a vertical asymptote at x equal to 1. By the way, is it even or odd? Yeah, looking at the power of 2, we know it's even. So if it goes up, it's up both sides. If it goes down, it's down on both sides. All right, any holes? Hopefully you see that there are none now because nothing actually factors out. And the x-intercept, when I let y equal 0, I believe I get 2 thirds, comma 0. Okay, 
and the y-intercept if I plug in 0 I believe I get negative 2 so look I already have a lot of information vertical asymptote at x equal to 1 x-intercept at 2 thirds y-intercept at negative 2 okay and then finally now what about the end behavior now let's do some calculus right so let me do some limits um, the limit as x approach to infinity of this function 3x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 1 once again I will just ask you to look at the highest power this seems to simplify to mm -hmm, using the end behavior model and I guess I get here, that's right, 0. So your end behavior is uh, y equals 0, horizontal asymptote. Now you're thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa it's a horizontal asymptote, but I have an x-intercept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One little caveat about horizontal asymptotes. We're not really talking about values close to the origin. We're talking about what the end behavior will be. So really far out, really far out. Okay, so there can be an x-intercept in the middle because we're not really saying it's a, an asymptote or a line that you can't actually touch um, at all values of x. We're just looking at what happens when the x values are really large and negatively large. Okay. All right, now it's your turn to try the first derivative number line and the second derivative number line. Okay, I want you to try that first before coming back and double checking with me. Please press pause. Okay, I'm looking at the first derivative and I see a critical number perhaps of one third. Right, looking here, critical number is one third. Um, remember, when you're doing this, you should also plot the vertical asymptote because it could change what happens. So you really have actually one, not just two, but three different regions to test. And if you did test this out properly, you would have found this to be negative, this to be positive, and yes, it does change. So if you didn't plug in that one, you were mistaken and so in this case I go from negative to positive then to negative but wait this is an asymptote so that's really not a place where there's a relative max so I will say none but there is a relative min because you're going from negative to positive at one-third and if I look for the corresponding y value when I plug it back into f of x you should have found that it's equal to negative 9 over 4. <clears throat> Points of inflection, second derivative, uh -huh. make that equal 0, so you got 0. Don't forget also to plug in 1, that's the restriction or the asymptote. And once again, you are have to, or you're required to test three different regions. Oh no, and this time if you did it, you would have got negative, positive, and oh, wait, this would have still been positive, you would have lucked out if you forgot. So what about my points of inflection? Yep, I've got one that changes from negative to positive, that must occur at zero, and that just happens to be the y-intercept. Ah. Okay, so now we got to put this together, okay? So... Looking at the first derivative, the graph is always negative, always negative, and because it's a horizontal asymptote at zero, I know it can't go up here like this and cross, I know it probably starts something like this, and it's always negative, always negative, until approximately one-third, so maybe this here is one-third, and this is one-third, negative nine-fourths that's my relative minimum and then what happens it becomes positive and so whoop, shoots up Wah! and it goes getting close to that asymptote and then that makes sense and then afterwards it's always negative so yeah that makes sense too because it's an even asymptote so if it goes up on the left hand side it also must be up on the right hand side 
and then it actually should be curving down but it's concaving up here so not a sad face oops and it can't even cross the x-axis but probably getting closer to the horizontal asymptote with a slightly happy face and if you drew this as your graph bravo you get what's going on so just be aware here when you do your number lines don't forget to also plot your asymptotes they mess you up okay turn the page the last one oh not uh, rational but this time a radical Ooh. okay i'm gonna let you try this all by yourself because i think you have enough skill to do this on your own and once again come back and check your work with mine all right go domain in my case i think it's all real numbers no vertical asymptotes in my book no holes either for this radical function Definitely an x-intercept, right? Definitely a y-intercept. <laughs> it's the same as the x-intercept. So this nice dot right here at the origin. End behavior. Ooh, now let's have some fun. Limit x approach to infinity. Oh, oh, remember this thing, the square root of x squared? <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing as x, right? So maybe what I'll say is using the end behavior model and the square root of x squared when x is positive is x so we have here one nice now please don't go and do that what's the problem here for a radical function be careful because the limit as x approach to negative infinity is not necessarily the same like the rational functions remember how we did this before and the square root of x squared when x is negative is that's right negative x so uh oh two separate asymptotes two separate horizontal asymptotes y equals to 1 and also y equals to negative 1 wow okay and then how about the relative max so I'm going to do my first derivative number line here and I'm thinking hmm there is no value <laughs> okay so I notice this is cubed and this is the square root I think this is always going to be positive why because of course something squared is always positive so i guess the graph looks something like this right or i guess it probably curves away something like this too okay so that gives me a good idea that it's always positive that makes sense how about the second derivative then this is the one where hopefully i'll get some more interesting information about its shape so notice zero and if I made the number line and I did the testing, I would have found positive for x values that are less than 0. And a negative second derivative when the values are bigger than 0. Which means concave up. So notice concaving up and increasing before 0. And then after 0, still increasing, but also concaving down. There's your graph. Relative max, no such thing in this case. Relative min, also no such thing in this case. Point of inflection, you bet. Zero, zero. <laughs> there you have it. Okay? So, it's time for you to practice. Okay? And once again, really just a review of all the things you've done so far, but put together in one little compact box called curve sketching.